All right, so give me a slate. So uh, first and last name, and then take one, and then clap in front of your uh, in front of the your face. Okay. All right, and I'm rolling. Awesome, Ferris. Take one. All right. Thanks. So. So uh, this is my first mission trip. I've never considered a mission trip before, but the reason I decided to come on this trip was primarily just to serve and to be a part of something bigger than myself. And I just really wanted to experience a different culture and see how that would transform me and my faith and my, and my growth as a, a man of God. A good, a good part of Love Works and what it does is it gives you perspective. It gives you a way of looking at life and looking at people in a way that you would never see in the United States. Erica Wessel, scene one, take one, mark. My name is Erica Wessels. I've been on two LoveWorks trips. The first trip I went on was to Brazil, and then the second one was this past summer. I went to Swaziland as a co-leader with Tim Hall with the soccer team and a couple of the guys from the soccer team. Bar, go on the other team. Come this way. I've had the privilege of leading eight uh, LoveWorks trips over the past 17 years since I've been at PLNU and uh, it has been a tremendous experience, a gift for me to see these PLNU students lead by example and step up. And, and I believe that they step up in ways that they didn't even expect to. I never want to come to a place where I'm stagnant in my faith because I feel like then I'm not growing. Going on these trips gives you an opportunity to put your faith into action. I have an opportunity really to see the growth of students that I'm with, to watch them deal with new settings and to try to understand some of the great contrasts that are evident here uh, internationally. I ask them each one before we go to start praying about what do you feel God wants you to get out of this trip. So when you put them in these environments, uh, things happen. As soon as I stepped out of the airport at Johannesburg, we saw just slums and just people, and that just in itself began to shift my perspective and really made me question what I really believed. I remember thinking, you know, God, why, why was I not born in this country? Why was I born in the United States where things appear to be more comfortable? Having food, having shelter, having a job where the Bible doesn't define being blessed as material things, and that's something that is hard in missions because you go to these places and you see these people that have such need, but a lot of times you can't fill those needs. As a leader, many times I step back and I watch, uh, and that's one of the things that touches me so deeply is to see how they process the questions that they ask, the silence that they put themselves in just to think and to meditate and to contemplate. And these young people have a sensitivity and they have a desire for their, their minds to be open, their hearts to be open. And so when they're placed in a situation where they're actually seeing AIDS or HIV or poverty, it's, it's a challenge for them to start processing, but yet they just endorse it. It's been a good week. We've been out uh, in a number of areas, way out in rural bush areas, uh, worked with some school children trying to get a garden together so that uh, students at a school that had predominantly HIV students could have good nutrition. We're out in an area called Siteki. Um, they have a task force here that brings food and clothing and okay. different things to these people that can't get out. AIDS is involved quite a bit and uh, they pray for them. Some of them are on their deathbeds and others are getting there. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just want to thank you for our sister in Christ here. Lord, I thank you so much that, um, that your love is so great and that there is no corner of the world, God. There is no jungle. There is no desert, Lord, that you cannot reach. Lord, I thank you so much for the opportunity we have. You work through all things. Lord, um, I just pray that the supplies we brought would be a blessing, Lord. I thank you so much um, for your love and uh, your son, God, and the salvation that he brings in your son's name, amen. amen.
I didn't know if I would ever have full function of my arm again, or if I could ever play sports again. Now I look down at my scars and I am thankful. It is a reminder to me that no matter what the struggle may be, God will provide the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual strength needed to get through it because nothing is impossible with God. Thank you. It's hard to put words around it, uh, but I just really just trying to, to soak in all the time that I have here and really just, just be present. You really do experience some things that you never would have been able to experience by just staying at home. Just the simple fact of being stripped from all the distractions that we have here. We could truly be present and really live in the moment. <laughs> Different kind of yo-yo. It's a new talent. <laughs> There's something about the college student at their stage of life. What I see in this age group is just a fundamental thing that is so good for a mission trip like this. They're at a time in their life where they're gaining independence, their eyes are open, their minds are thinking, and many of them are very serious about their faith. Love works causes you to question things, it causes you to solidify different things in your faith, and so whatever it is that's put in front of us, that's what we're going to do, because at the root of it, it's just a call of obedience. It's an answer to what the Lord has kind of put on our hearts. Thank you so much uh, for Point Loma. To us as a church, this is very significant. As much as the culture is different, they are Christians, we are Christians. So the fellowship that we have had, it was great. We thank God for the Love Words team. For some, I've seen majors changed. I've seen vocations and callings changed. But for most, and for all of them pretty much, the main thing is, how does it impact me now? How do I balance what I just saw, what I experienced, and the vastness of it, and how we can be stewards of what we have here with what we learned there? <laughs>